All right, response video to Nick the Modern Mystic. Kind of good subjects: nature, nurture, um, rule making, gameplay. Uh, none of this this kind of woo woo, <laughs> you know, from his last videos. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, this is the real this is the real stuff. Okay, I mean, what we are. All right, by nature, we are desirous. We're in need. We're in want. We're deprivated by nature, and uh, we are. What, what, how we satisfy that deprivation is decided through conditioning. And um, although conditioning sounds really good, I mean, it sounds almost like, yes, conditioning is going to be an improvement, um, uh, a, a, a rationalization, or I mean, a rationalizing of, of um, our disposition and our desire. Um, yeah, as we know, it's kind of circumstantial. I mean, you know, some of it can be good. You can talk to somebody and through that you can condition them when they're young um, you can say the right things but sometimes you know you're wearing a the wrong color hat they don't get the idea because they rejected the hat and everything's fucked so yeah we can be conditioned poorly um, and unintentionally I mean obviously a bunch of there's, there's been plenty of Catholics throughout history of trying to condition their kids to be Catholic and somehow they don't turn out that way um, so anyway, it, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's no point in trying to define these lines, like how much of us is nature and how much of us is nurture, because it's the same thing being manipulated by the two forces. The one force creates the desire, the need, the deprivation. The other force orients it, uh, decides how it's going to be exactly, how, how the exact details of the desire. But it's really, they're both it's the same thing so there's no point in trying to figure out which one's more dominant because one of them creates the game the other one creates the rules so that gets us to the conversation of this rule making thing and the commons and all that crap and Nick's kind of pessimistic um, on what is possible and I guess he takes that from human history and I, to me that's a really bad example I mean historically we've never even understood we're in a game. I mean, we've never even, we've never even figured out that this needs to be organized and all that kind of crap. We've just kind of dealt from our perspective as individuals and tried to fight for these weird concepts. I mean, you still, you still have people here on YouTube whining and complaining, freedom, freedom, and you try to pin them down exactly what freedom they feel so oppressed that they don't fucking have. And you know what ends up? Yeah, I want the freedom to molest seven-year-old boys. I mean, what the fuck? What, what freedoms don't you have? Um, you know, beyond the, the freedom to intoxicate yourself and go kill somebody else's kids on the highway or drive a train to, through a town uh, because you decided to get a little too stoned. I mean, you know, beyond that freedom, what freedom are, are people feeling? What, what, what is their horrible oppression? I mean, it's just such a, it's just a, a funny concept, um, these assholes crying for their freedom. Um, you know, but anyway, uh, because we're hardly, we're hardly as oppressed as they've been, at least socially, in the past. Um, we've come a long way, baby, kind of thing. And so it all seems like a big, stupid, idiotic whine. Um, but anyway, let's get back to this. The Look, all this is, is all, all this government thing is, is rules, basically. And then all you need is umpire, something to enforce the rules, period. And so we now we've called it government, and now people have this perception that government is this entity, this force, this whatever, and that's really not what it is. It isn't some thing that's a a alive. It should be just dead rules. It should be just rules, things that don't change, things that don't do anything until you do something to them. And it's it's all you know. The reason why the system sucks is because we haven't spent any time whatsoever in designing a good game. I mean, who's doing that? Nobody's doing it. We haven't engineered systems. We just keep taking what we've got, you know, from tradition, and and we play with it. We we tweak it a little here and tweak it a little there without really understanding the consequences of these tweaks. I mean, we invent social security and finance it kind of a bogus, stupid way, so it's not sustainable. And then we say we're done because it works for the short term. And so then we just keep putting the problem that we created off to the long term. So now in the long term, we're gonna have to do some more chipping. We're going to have to fuck with it some more. Um, and every time you fuck with it, you risk, again, creating an, a, an effect that you didn't intend. Um, and if, especially if you don't do it with a real solid, um, you know, to get, get your data right, get your facts straight, um, and do it in a real disciplined manner so you understand consequences. And the idea is to 
not create consequences. The idea is to chip it off just fucking right uh, so you make it work. So that there isn't going to be some future consequence. And you just evolve into good rules. And so there's lots of games in the world. I mean, it's, you know, games that have been around forever almost, like checkers or something. And it, it works perfectly fine. It has perfectly fine rules. As long as somebody doesn't become too to, you know, you, the only way you gain advantage is just by coming to the game with a better understanding of the game dynamic. And so if you're, if you've got the math down, some other things down, you can create an advantage for yourself. It's kind of, sort of like tic-tac-toe. It's, I mean, it's a good game if you both walk up to it completely ignorant. All right. But if you walk up to it knowing that you can eliminate the possibility of losing and guarantee at worst a tie, well, then the game is sort of fucked. Um, and and so then we look at our the big games that exist for us you know, the big entertainment games um, the, the, we all we all been stuck with another another problem I mean you look at the you know football or soccer or whatever you want to call it and all these other sports and um, the, we've got this legacy problem of this idea of you know there's players and there's spectators and then there's this weird thing called an owner. I mean, and that fucks the whole thing up because who gets to make the rules? I mean, if we let the spectators make the rules, well, you know, people are going to tend to do. They're going to say, "I want more blood, more guts, more car wrecks, more, more horror," uh, you know, because people are sick fuckers. Um, and if you make the players decide the rules, well, yeah, then it's going to be, well, no, every 10 minutes we take a break and have some champagne and croissants and blah blah blah. So the, you know, we can't let them make the rules. And then these owner guys, you can't make them make the rules because they're just as cynical and self-interested. Um, so somehow you have to give, you have to divide this power to make rules, and you have to, and ideally you just have to have people that have nothing else on their mind but creating a good game. I mean that they actually engineer a system, and then you put those system designs in front of these people and say, well, look, here's our choice of systems, here's our choice of rules. Um, you know, let's let's pick the right one. You know, let's do the right thing. And then I think it's possible, but we haven't really done that. Like I said, our democracies haven't evolved in 200 fucking years. I mean, we have computer technology, and we're still voting. You know, on paper, essentially, we're still we're still scribbling an X on a ballot. We're still doing nothing with that technology to maximize our voice in the government, our representation. Um, uh, we know certain things. You put ballot initiatives on ballots, and guess what? More people show up to vote. But uh, the the powers that be, you know, the the ownership society, whoever whoever has the most control over that rule society. And right now, it's sort of the owners. You know, the the rich. Um, they they have the most control, and they're able to create a system, like a game, where essentially a lot of people don't even want to play. I mean, they're all saying, well, "Give me a different game. Give me a better game." So they don't even participate in the system anymore. They won't even participate in making the rules anymore. They've, 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 they've become so distant and, and detached from social participation or even the idea of it. Um, so cynical about it. Um, but this really, it really isn't that complicated. I don't think there's anything... I mean, I don't think you can make an argument that there is, as you're implying, like there is some kind of thing that makes it impossible. Like there's just some sort of barrier, some sort of you know end of space thing that we just can't fly through you know that there's some brick wall we're always going to crash into I mean it's just a system it's just designing an efficient system and if you understand the variables which are you know the corruptibility of human beings um, uh, well, that's the big one really right I mean the selfishness of individuals and their little societies and understand what you have to mitigate against I don't think it's that hard to do. I mean, it's not that hard to create a system, and then all you have to do is be able to somehow argue it to all the constituencies and get them to adopt it. Um, but I think the mo as we become more aware of what this is, it, it, it's it, you know, it's, it becomes clearer and clearer. I think it will become clearer to people that this isn't that complicated. That that it's just trying to balance power, and and in the end. Every, it's in everybody's, um, to everyone's advantage to have a good game. I mean, to create a game that's no good, that's 
erratic and inconsistent and unfair. It's not going to be good for the owners. It's not going to be good for the players. And it's not going to be good for the spectators. So, I mean, they all have an interest in creating a good game. And, uh, and what makes a good game is just having really excellent rules and, you know, strict accountability. You know, umpires, enforcement agencies that decide who broke a rule uh, that are um, uh, above corruptions. And we see it now, even in, in sport. Um, you know, they, they've made some of it very mechanical. I mean, they put little electronic sensors on, on the goals in hockey. So now it's not up to some subjective asshole to decide whether a goal has been scored. The machine tells you whether the goddamn goal has been scored. So it's the more mechanized we can make um, the rules and, and the determination of a violation of the rules, um, the more open and apparent we make it, uh, the better the game's going to be played, the, the better it will be.